The free-for-all team has been traveling, but we've got them gathered up for a conversation about the issues that really matter. What did we learn from the road the past couple of weeks? We've got some perspective on the jobs data and what it means for interest rates. And the spending bills are finally beginning to pass through Congress. Live from the final lapse of the week via Farm Journal broadcast, this is AgriTalk. This morning, it's a Friday for Reaper Hall with panelists Jim Wiesmeyer and Sean Haney. Directly following the news, Jennifer Scheich from Farm Journal's Pork. I'm handsome newsman Davis Michelson. Now, welcome your beloved host, Chip Flory. All right, Davis. Hey, thank you so much. You know, we lost the sunshine. We lost the warm temperatures. Mm-hmm. It's 34 degrees. It's Ooh. rainy. Ooh. The good news is it's raining. Dude. Well, and you avoided that uh, that unsightly midge hatch, too, as that, I understand. You just dropped right below it. That's good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. For today. It was it well, was all over the place yesterday. Mm-hmm. The midges march on. I mean, let's not let's not kid ourselves. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Welcome to Agri Talk. I'm your host Chip Flory. That is Davis Michelson. Yo. We got the free for all back, baby. Yeah. Uh, we had to take a break last week. We had coverage from Commodity Classic, uh, but we've got everything back in place for this week. It, obviously, we're going to have to spend some time talking about the state of the union address. Hmm. Um, I've I've spent time watching the analysis on CNBC, on CNN, on Fox business, Mm -hmm. on, on Fox news. And the the divide between how this guy did in his, his state of the union address is as wide as as i've it's just it's it's incredible that the same group of people can watch the same speech by the Mm. same guy and have such wide-ranging opinions here's what i did i watched the speech itself uh live in in real time and then i shut off the tv oh i just sat and thought for a while yeah. So we'll we'll see what that gets us. Okay. We'll see what yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll see what uh what what kind of fruit that produces for yeah. us. Yeah. All right. We've got Wiesmeyer coming up, Haney standing by. So let's get to it. What you got in the news? Well, I don't want to start with this word, Chip, but cancellation of sales, one hundred ten thousand metric tons of soft red winter wheat to China. That's for the twenty three twenty four marketing year. Now trade sources say there'll likely be an additional a series of cancellations. China still has more than 1 million metric tons on the book that has not yet been shipped, Chip. Yeah. Yeah. Th- th- this is part of the reason that SRW futures are down here trading at contract lows. Mm. It's uh, it's an unfortunate situation. There's no question about it. But, you know, when China made those purchases, price was buck and a half, at least a buck higher than what it is right now. And they're going to flush them out and and rebook the the supplies later. Well, we'll go to the uh, National Weather Service weather forecast. Excessive rainfall may bring flooding to portions of the southeastern U.S., including parts of the Birmingham and Atlanta metro areas today. Severe thunderstorms forecast from the lower Mississippi Valley today into the southeastern U.S. by Saturday. Tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds are possible, Chip. Heavy snow will continue into today over parts of the central Rockies and the central plains. Pay attention. That's Indeed. all we can tell you. Uh, USDA expected to make just minor adjustments to its U.S. usage forecasts in the supply and demand report. That's out today at 11 a.m. Central Time. That could lead to slight changes in the 23-24 domestic ending stocks. The U.S. economy added 275,000 jobs in February, beating forecasts. The January reading was revised sharply lower from an initial 353,000, which was the highest in a year. The December reading? Also revised lower. With the January and December revisions, employment combined is 167,000 jobs lower than previously reported. Yep. Pay attention to the initial report, and and there's a hope that nobody pays attention to the revisions later. That's exactly it. Yeah. The uh, UN Food and Ag Organization Global Food Price Index dropped another seven-tenths of a percentage point in February as decreases for the price for cereal grains and veg oils more than offset increases in sugar, meats, and dairy. 
Chip, an important note here, the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association announced that cattle producers impacted by wildfires in the Texas Panhandle and Western Oklahoma can now apply for financial help. Applicants are not required to be a member of the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association to qualify for aid. For more info, you can go to tscra.org. That's tscra.org, yeah. Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association. Yeah, good stuff. They're doing good things, Davis. Indeed, indeed. Uh, U.S. pork producers approved a resolution to enhance the country's live swine traceability system during the 2024 National Pork Industry Forum hosted by the National Pork Producers Council. Flory Stevermer, incoming NPPC president and Minnesota producer, noted these standards will improve our ability to control the spread of a foreign animal disease and lessen the economic impact of an outbreak should one occur. Yeah, we're going to learn more about that from Jennifer Scheidt coming up here in just a moment. Hey, here's a piece of good news, Chip. The AM for Every Vehicle Act has hit the magic number of voting co-sponsors it will need to ensure passage through the House of Representatives. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says he's, quote, ready to run with the act at the moment Congress gets it done. Yeah, that is very good news. You know, we're, we're big supporters of AM radio here at AgroTalk. Indeed we are. Yes. Well, farmers in Brazil are reportedly filing for bankruptcy protection at a, quote, concerning pace. Mm -hmm. As high interest rates and falling prices squeeze profits, this according to credit data provider Serasa. Experian uh, looks like soybean producers are having the, the most trouble there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not that it's a huge number of total bankruptcies. It's the rate of increase in the that's bankruptcies right. that's got um, everybody's attention. Yep. All right. Thanks, Davis. Sure thing. Let's bring in Jennifer Scheich, editor of Farm Journal's Pork. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. All good. right. So you, Davis talked about it. U.S. producers approved a resolution to enhance the country's live swine traceability system at the 24 National Pork Industry Forum earlier this week. What happened? I mean, this has been something we've been working on traceability for years and decades, really. It's not it's not anything new, but we've had an opportunity to be able to have a voice, a producer led voice going to USDA and saying, hey, here are some of the gaps that we have in our swine traceability system. And this is what we would recommend that we do to address those gaps. And so basically, through a series of comment periods, a task force at MPPC put together um, recommendations that were passed this week by the delegates to send forward to USDA. Now, USDA gets to make the final decision on what that is, but, you know, we're, we're feeling good that we got this passed. I think there were some questions about whether it would. There was a good discussion. Um, you know, there's, it's going to be, it's going to be work. I mean, it, yeah. the swine industry does a lot of work to, to, keep track of, of what they're doing and a lot of reporting. And I talked to several producers that, you know, it, they spend so much more time doing paperwork than they ever did. So, yes. and I, I know that's not unique, but I do think they really rise above and this is going to be more of that, but will be the best thing for our industry. I think. Yeah. It may not be unique, Jennifer, but the, I, I don't think there's any question that the hog industry has shown a, uh, a willingness. Uh, is that the right word? Uh, yes. They understand, mm -hmm. they understand the need to mm -hmm. move forward with this traceability when, You've got so many animals going through the system every day. You got to have a way of tracing things down. Good stuff, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Get more. www.porkbusiness.com. It's the free for all coming your way next. The guys have been on the road. Heck, we haven't talked to Haney since he's been at Commodity Classic. We'll find out what he learned down there. We've got the free for all coming up next here on AgriTalk. Welcome back to AgriTalk. I'm your host, Jeff Flory. Glad that you are with us on this Friday morning for the free for all. Jim Wiesmeyer, pro former policy analyst. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Just back from Peoria, Illinois. The Strom Farms, by the way, was an excellent yeah. conference there. What'd you learn? Oh, I learned a lot about uh, sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, yeah. They had some great presentations that I'll throw your way. And I think. The outlook person you know, Sam. Sam Hudson. Hudson. Yeah. He he did yeah. a good job as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sam's been on the shows many times. Many yes. times with us. Yeah. So yeah, it's good to know. Um Sean Haney, Real Agriculture, Real Ag Radio. How you doing, buddy? Yep, I'm doing great. Great to be good. here. Yeah. It's yeah. uh hard to believe we're already halfway through March, man. It's nuts. I know. I know. 
I, is this the first time that we've been together even since pitchers and catchers have reported? It, yeah. It might be. On the free for all, yeah. I, I just yeah. I saw you last week at Commodity Classic. Right. But yeah, you're right. I yes, I think it is. So it's crazy. It's yeah. Crazy. Well I'm just gonna say it. I'm 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 just gonna say it. Number one, watch out for the cyclones in the NCAA tournament. Watch out. No, no bias there. It's okay. Yeah, yeah that's, I understand. There's some very and, objective analysis gone and, into that. And watch out for the Cubs this year. <laughs> You say that. I you do not. So I do not. I say you, you said it last year. I uh, did Davis, not. Davis, go, go back to the yep. first, you know, when they're, the notes right when they're here. 3-0, the notes. he gets all excited. Yep. Oh, yeah. uh, you're so full of, yeah, okay. But all right. Great so, signing of Bellinger. They got, like, yeah, yeah they're, they're looking they're looking decent, Chip. I'll, I'll give you that. They're, they're, they're looking like they got a chance in the Central, for sure. They do. They do. What'd you learn down at Commodity Classic, Haney? Uh, I at last week at Commodity Classic, and this week at a couple different speeches in different parts of yeah. Western Canada, uh, the farmers very undersold. <laughs> yeah. There is a lot of twenty three crop on farm. Uh, obviously, Commodity Classic, a lot of people talking about corn. Uh, in Western Canada, a lot of people talking about canola. And you know, I, I, I was, uh, I was at the the it was at the AgMarket.net booth. I remember, and uh, which you know, the statement was made to me by Matt Bennett. If the you if the farmer sells twenty three corn today, they're losing mm-hmm. money, right? Yeah. There's a lot of holders regret out there. The, but the big question is, what do you do going forward from a marketing standpoint to uh, make the best decision you you can possible? What you didn't do before, that's done with. It's over. Now it's what do you do going forward? Right, right. Yeah, the number one question that I got undoubtedly was, uh, has corn put in a low? what kind of a rally should we expect this spring? Uh, I'm, I'm echoing what I've been getting from, from guest analysts on the PM show and, and saying, you know, if in the past you're used to getting a 70, 80, 90 cent rally in the spring in corn, maybe pull that back 30, Mm -hmm. 35, 40 cents should be your expectations this year, just because we've got that, the the weight of the farmer owned stocks that are over the market and the idea that we're going to be over 2 billion bushels of, of corn carry over at the end of the year. It's, it's, that is an issue that obviously we haven't had to deal with for quite some time. 15% stocks to use ratio. Uh, when, when, when you get into that kind of ground, it's not positive. It It is not positive. Now, how much of that has been factored in? Can we start to bring some demand back, start to pull that stocks to to use ratio backwards bit? I think those are are questions that all need to be answered. Yeah, and okay. there's a, and Chip, just one more thing. Uh, oh. the, the other thing I'm sort of picking up too is be careful your expectations uh, on like short squeeze. It was funds are, are are pretty short and like be careful your expectations that we're just launching back to where we were. Be disciplined in terms of selling into those rallies like you just talked about. Yeah, they've already got out of a chunk, a chunk of those uh, short positions, and it moved the market like nine cents. So eh, there's there's a lot of hedging that has to take place at the same time. So uh, that's a big part of it there. Jim, talk to me about the appropriations process. We finally got some progress. Yep, and the Senate will pass it, uh, looks like, early this afternoon, about an hour or so from now. So, uh at least the first six bills are done, and then we have the harder six bills to come by midnight, March the 22nd. But I think that there's a will to get it uh, done. They'll go through fits and starts on it, but uh, they're already talking about fiscal year 2025 spending, which they should. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I, I saw that. At least they're not wasting any time moving on no. to the next can that they will kick down the road. Uh, <laughs> let's... Uh, get a little bit more on the USDA funding, uh, funding for agriculture that's in the bill. Is there anything, any of the details that we need to be made aware of? Well, not that that, not that would be surprising. They got another billion dollars for the WIC, uh, you know, program and, and the Democrats had really, uh, had really pressed on that. And you saw more than a few earmarks uh in 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 the bill chip a lot of money billions of dollars like 6600 earmarks yeah so we're uh we're back to that you know and i said this to davis on the show yesterday 
I'm a guy that I'm in favor of earmarks as long as they are vetted and go through the entire process the way that they're supposed to go through, you know, the, the, the evaluating it from start to finish. I'm all for it, but there's no way that the, all 6,600 of these earmarks could have gone through any of the vetting process on this. No, none of it. I might like a requirement that if you get an earmark approved, you have to vote in favor of the bill. Oh, you know, that could be a caveat that I would like. I, I like the crazy one. Like we're going to build a Ferris wheel in somebody's hometown and stuff like yeah. that. Those are, those are entertaining. Well, as long as it's vetted and everybody agrees to it, then, then fine. But <laughs> the, the, when, when they're just, you know, and they're not earmarks, they're ear tags. They just get, you know, stamped on at the very end. It's, it's a uh, ridiculous stuff. Um, okay. It, it, what does this mean now for the farm bill, Jim? Does it, does it, uh, give us a boost? Does it generate some momentum behind not, the farm bill? Not yet, because you have to get that the second six bill through. You remember G.T. Thompson, House Ag Committee chairman, has indicated that the appropriations have to be complete, meaning the second portion. And yeah. then uh, sometime, I think, right around the Easter uh, break, Chip, that he'll release what we call a chairman's mark. At least that's what they're saying uh, yeah. once they return from Easter. So we'll finally get perhaps a legislative initiative, but we're with the same issues on the farm bill, the the additional funding that they can't find. You've got Stabenow on the Senate side holding her ground saying, look, I've got my conservation spending, you know, around 20 billion. Uh, I've got the food stamp funding spending, and I'm not going to go along with some of your ideas, Republicans. So, and then the ranking member, uh, Bozeman, is saying we've got to have a big increase in reference prices. So I think you up your odds for 2025. Yeah, right, right after the State of the Union, uh, National Association of Wheat Growers were out with a press release right away. Um, and one of the things noted in that was, you know, the 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 disappointment in how slow the farm bill process has ha, has gone in the you know under this one year extension. So need to have yeah. the political will to push it across the finish line. What yeah. I did pick up on the road, Chip, is even in that in the Peoria area, if you've got your 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 yield, if you think your yield's going to be above your county, you better seriously look at some of these area wide programs and in crop insurance, uh, the SCO and ECO, because I'm yeah. telling you, it'll pencil it pencil out last year for those smart producers who did it, and it could this year. Yeah. Yeah, we had a conversation with Jared Creed from JC Marketing. Davis was it Wednesday? Is it yeah. Wednesday? Yeah. 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 It was it was it was Wednesday on the show and uh on the PM show. So it, boy, you want to talk about a long list of things that you need to think about when you're making your your crop insurance selection and the add-on programs that are available. Yes. Like you said, Jim, it's uh those are critical in the whole evaluation of this thing. There's, there's no, no doubt, no doubt about that, especially this year. I had one question that came in after the show and it would, it basically said, why not just ensure your revenue up to your break even level? I don't know if you can do that this year for, for the first time in three years, four years. I don't know if that option is available for a corn producer to just lock in a break even level with with uh, the 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 uh, revenue protection programs that are that are out there. So if you can do it, yeah, absolutely, jump on that and do it. But I, I think the odds are that uh, you're not going to be able to do that, and and you're going to have to construct something with the buy-ons and, and the add-on programs that are out there. These right, add-on got... programs, and that could affect their marketing you, you yeah. know, psyche. Chip, that's what I'm hearing from analysts. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We've got the free-for-all going. We're in the middle of it. Haney, Wiesmeyer, Michelson, and me right here on AgriTalk.
Opinions expressed on AgriTalk do not necessarily reflect the views of Farm Journal Broadcasting, affiliate stations, or sponsors. When news breaks, the newsmakers talk about it on AgriTalk with Chip Flory. Welcome back to AgriTalk and the Free For All. We've got Pro Farmer Policy Analyst Jim Wiesmeyer, Sean Haney, Real Agriculture, Real Ag Radio, Davis Michelson, and me, your host, Chip Flory. Uh, Jim, one last thing on the farm bill. We had Senator Jerry Moran from Kansas on the show last week or this week. And uh, he was on Monday morning and I've not heard. He's usually a very optimistic guest. I've not heard the frustration level uh, that high when it comes to the farm bill and the chance of of making progress. He he just said that uh, uh, Chairwoman Stabenow has walked away from the farm bill. It, it, uh, I would I would listen very carefully to Moran, as you said. He's a pretty good barometer of the of the of the current feelings. But mm-hmm. you know, things could change later this year, Chip. If uh, if corn goes under four dollars and goes to the three fifty area, oh, uh, that some people yep. say. In fact, Sam Hudson said we could, the exaggerated low could be three and a quarter. I haven't heard that low yet. And then under eleven dollars beans to ten fifty or so, uh, that would put pressure on. But right now, Moran expressed exactly what's going on. You're yeah. upping your odds that this thing will not get done this year. Yeah, Haney, is that how you see it? Yeah, uh, well, yeah. I, I think declining commodity prices would be a bit of a shot in the arm for the political will to to increase here to to make this to get this done and to happen and. You know, we're we're looking at a D's future of four sixty six and a and a half. So yeah. you know, we're not quite at that. Some of yeah. those the gyms well, talking. As far as, well, really, I, I was talking nearby. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, as far as what what Marshall had to say, I mean, Senator Grassley backed it up. He said Stabenow. I think the quote was thrown in the towel. Yeah. So we've got uh, we got two witnesses now on that. So is that just yeah. political positioning to say like you know just sort of like hey we're doing our job on this side of the aisle and it's the other side other side is there more to it. I didn't catch that from Grassley's quote anyway. Uh, okay. But it may have just been a tailored soundbite too. I don't know. And Stabenow doesn't like to give too much based on her history. No, and she's got what she wants on conservation. She she's got what she wants on the nutrition programs. Those were priorities one and two or one and one A yeah. for Stabenow in this. The 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 title one and the farm bill safety net. Uh, farm program safety net yeah yeah if if she can make some improvements on that and and find the funding for it i think she probably would but if not i i i don't see a whole lot of effort coming from the senate side to move this thing forward and bozeman on the senate side ranking member he's thinking we've got pretty good odds but the uh republicans are going to take over the senate so i'll 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 be in control and in the new Congress. But the, the, what we need to watch is Thompson is uh, house ag chair Thompson, it, because he's not going to give up on this thing, Jim. There's no way he will. No, but the key question for Thompson is there's one, how much money have you found? How much additional money have you found? And I think as you know, people are saying they need up to a 50 billion <laughs> additional dollars <laughs> for adequate reference prices in this environment i you know that's that's creative writing to me why not just print oh. the money that's been, that i mean it's been the tongue in cheek critique of you know the federal policy for so long yeah. why not just print the money and apply it to farm programs oh, or invest it's, it's or not invest t- in bitcoin yes yeah. <laughs> it's not tongue it's not tongue in cheek anything it's modern monetary theory mm-hmm. is what that is. Oh. It's print the money and just. And so why is agriculture money? exempt from that? Um, well, I'm not, has it been though in the past? There, there's been a lot of money thrown at agriculture. I'm true, not, has true. it really been? There, sort of there's, out? there's been a sizable uh, ATM machine available to us called the billion. commodity. Yeah, the Commodity Credit Corporation, they they refund that son of a gun to the tune of how much? $30 billion. $30 billion a year? Even now, that's a chunk of change. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. 
Yes, it is. Uh, l- let's get to some uh, some current events here for the rest of the show. Had the State of the Union address last night. Jim, we'll start with you. Thoughts? Biden was speaking to his constituency, not to Republicans. And uh, he, he was, I think he had the thing. Well, of, he was yelling at the Republicans. Well, uh, uh, Senator Thune from South Dakota said he was like Chris Farley in the, uh, you know, down that. by the river. I saw that. <laughs> oh, what, come on, was it? You know, I don't know if it was. Yeah, he did that. say that. He did say that. <laughs> I don't it? think. Uh, yeah, I, Did I he fall through, like he didn't fall through a table or anything. No, I, I didn't think that he was really that <laughs> loud. Yet. Number one, I think he's trying to increase the enthusiasm amongst his amongst the Democrats and the independents. So it's going to be curious on the polls a week or two from now to see. You usually get a, a little bump up. Uh, if that's the case, well, it, can he hold them? But yeah. I thought he did what he had to do. To, to be yeah. honest, he did what he had to do. He had uh, uh, fortitude. He was uh, usually the, the the word you hear from the media, fiery. He had a fiery speech. It was a political speech. There's yeah. no doubt about it. He blamed 40 minutes in. It took him 40 minutes in to talk about the border. That tells you his, uh, you know, uh, 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 priorities right there. Yeah. You know, over an hour speech. It, that was not, it wasn't a short 66. one. 66. No, 66 well, minutes. It's stamina. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I saw this morning. Uh, Americans agree with you too, Jim. Six out of 10 Americans believe it had a positive view of, of his speech last night. So that had to take some people from the right side of the aisle. Yeah. Um, you know, he kind of, he had, there was a flub up. Um, everybody's checking on Lincoln Riley, the head coach of yeah. USC football here. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, yes, that was that was that was on that was uh, very very unfortunate. But uh, yeah, he he showed life last night. I he thought did. he was fiery. It was a little bit more of an election stump speech than maybe a State of the Union in traditional senses. But yeah. he showed he still got some game, and there's some. Uh, he he's it just it's a question of is there any longevity to the bump here? Like maybe it's three four days and we're back to where we were, but we'll see. Yeah, here's my problem. Every time that he talks about an accomplishment he compares it to the absolute worst at the covid low and says look we've created 15 million jobs no you didn't we just had people go back to work that that's all it was well Uh, notice he started the speech by comparing himself to fdr I don't he know if I got that. Tried to. He tried. Well, to. yes, he he tried to draw a circle around himself and and make it similar between uh, 1941 and today. Oh and, yes, and he's the guy who can get it done. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, F- Interesting. I don't yeah. know. I'm trying to do the math really quickly in my head, but I think FDR was the president when he was born. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That that would be right. Yeah. Wow. Jim, you can't be laughing too think. hard. Hey. Yeah, Jim, what do you got to say, Jim? I go way back. <laughs> Maybe not that far, but close. Well, all right. And Let's the polls start. are showing that Trump does have a, a you know a, a small lead over Biden. This is going to be a, a very very close race. Uh, both sides incredibly you know are entrenched. The and, Wall Street Journal survey, only two points separate them now. Yeah. With Trump ahead. I'm sorry. That's a rounding error. Trump should be in Trump should be worried. Well, they you know, at this point, I think they should both be worried. There, There's a lot of time left between now and November five. Yes. And uh, there, there's going to be a lot of movement of the masses between now and then. I, I just. And when it, you look at those key who, states, who's Jeff, the most uh, important? The which group is going to be most important to watch between now and the election? Well, the independents, whether they'll uh, not will come back to vote for uh, uh, Trump again. I have my doubts, but can Trump can Trump keep the uh, the increases in the Hispanic and Black American vote right. that he's garnered because yep. that that's something to watch for. Here's one: you take about the six or seven key states that are going to decide this contest. If they split them, you could theoretically make a case that neither one gets to 270 electoral votes. Perfect. Okay. 
And if that's the case, then the house, not the existing house, right. the new house the next new house. year, you know, decides it. I'm not predicting that, but when you fiddle around with this uh, map thing, you can you're, come up with that. You're not it's predicting crazy. it, but you love seeing things that have never <laughs> happened before. Well, it would, it would make your freaking career we smire this is the yeah, election he, cycle that it would happen this is yeah, the yeah we we should expect the unexpected i i yeah. agree i agree with that so i'm not going to rule it out there's no doubt yeah yeah uh -huh. who's got the greatest momentum and, and you know because this was an important important week uh biden obviously picked up some momentum from last night we don't know how long that's going to last but trump was gaining some momentum earlier this week as well who who had the better week, Jim? Oh, I, I think it would be Biden now. Okay. Yeah. Haney. Yeah. But you think again, it was he's got to maintain it. Got to maintain it. Yeah, I, I thought he, I, I really did think he did well last night. I, I think there's, you know, partisan things you can pick on and you can pick it apart. But, you know, both guys have been screwing up names and mistaking yeah. things. It's been very, very unfortunate between the two of them. But uh, I, I think Biden had a better week. Davis. Did he call it the greatest comeback never told? in the u.s are, and are ever told with that did he i'd have to go back to the transcript he said it he said the greatest comeback never told and i just can't figure out if he was saying the story is yet unwritten i imagine that's the thrust the greatest comeback ever told i think is probably what he was going i don't i don't know yeah he needed to come out and and show himself to be able to to stand up um I thought the hardest job of the night was that lady with the white hair as he was walking in through the yeah. through yeah. the chamber, trying to kind of keep him yeah. moving. Everybody's exactly. trying to talk to him. Let's get exactly. him to the stage. All right. We're going to be right back with more of the free for all. 275,000 new non-farm payrolls. Really? I don't know what you're thinking. So call us at 855-4-TALK-AG and tell us what's on your mind. Welcome back to AgriTalk. I'm your host, Chip Flory. We're going to wrap up the free-for-all. Jim Wiesmeyer, Sean Haney, Davis Michelson. We had the 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 employment report was out this morning. 275,000 new non-farm payrolls added in February. The expectation was 200,000. But, but December non-farm payrolls revised down 43,000. Uh, January non-farm payrolls revised down 124,000 all the way down to 229,000 total uh, these revisions to past data it's a pattern that is repeating and how the market doesn't see it is beyond me and and it's it's something that's going to continue unemployment rate up to 3.9% that was up 0 0.2 from last month jim well, I had the conspiratorialist uh, email me saying, look at all these revisions. So, you know, isn't something going on here? And when I did the data check, uh, Chip, the upward revisions in 2021 data far exceed the downward revisions that 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 have been have been seen recently. So these are statisticians doing this report. They don't have an emotionality to the numbers. Yeah. Cold, yeah. hard numbers. <laughs> yeah, whether uh, you know, they're right or wrong. <laughs> you know, and, and with the unemployment, you know, the unemployment goes up a little like 0.1% or whatever, but it's it's still incredibly tight labor market. Yeah. Um definitely not seeing that pump up wage growth though. For for sure not. Average you, hourly earnings up 4.3% from year ago, up 0 0.1 from January. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we heard from Ch Chairman Fa or <laughs> Chairman Powell earlier this week. And it, it sort of providing a little bit of an indication that cuts are coming. Um, you know, a lot of analysts predicting now we're going to be more in the three range. And, you know, you have to think as patient as they have been to do the first cut, they're going to be just as patient in the middle of the cuts. So it won't be like a cut now, cut next month, cut the next month. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be over a period of time, I think, to 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 push this over a greater period of months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on. South Dakota legislature on Wednesday passed three different bill bills that are going to clear the way, clear more of the path for the Summit Carbon Solutions Pipeline. And they say that it's going to happen while they're protecting landowner rights on this. 
all of a sudden summit pipelines got momentum behind it again here jim it does and i'll tell you where you know you give a lot of speeches and so do i and uh, and sean uh, I, this is really an emotional uh, issue well, controversial you be, for oh sure, yeah. you got to be careful what you say but frankly a pipeline is needed i i just to being practical it's needed but i understand all the negatives, especially if it's on your property, the potential yield degradation, what are farmers being promised? But but this this is a significant development in South Dakota for sure. Yeah. Sure. She'll, she'll be, sign the bill. Can, can you be against this pipeline, but be pro Keystone pipeline? Because I, I've received some emails from people kind of sounding that way. Mm. Yeah. Um, you mean consistency? Yeah, a little bit of lack yeah. of consistency, maybe. I don't yeah. know. That's a fair question. Yeah, it's a fair question. And, and uh, you know, there are land issues, landowner right issues. There's there's uh, concern about the safety of the CO2 pipelines. Uh, there have been some issues, but it, it I, I it, the, the safety is paramount. And it it does seem to be that they've got this figured out. Uh, that's the impression that I've got uh, with the safety of the pipeline. So it's uh, it, it's going to continue to push forward. You've got more than half of the ethanol producers in the country now signed up with Summit. Yeah. Well, you've got to have a, a meet the infrastructure as part of the infrastructure that's needed. And to get so to SAF. There's yep. no doubt about it. No doubt yep. about it. Sustainable aviation fuel is what this is all being done for. Uh, you, you know, and it, it, we made the comment last week down at Commodity Classic. There is no question in my mind that the same people that are saying, listen, we need 3 billion gallons of sustainable aviation fuel by 2030. We got to have it. Why aren't you producing it? Are the same groups that do not like corn based ethanol. Yeah. They're the same groups. And uh, so again, d can you can you be for Keystone and against the CO two? Can you be for SAF and against corn based ethanol? I, it, it, these are questions and issues that the the answers are sometimes hard to find, Jim. Well, and yeah. and it is it is we have increasing protectionism around the world and becomes di more difficult and more difficult to get products into some of these these countries we're trying to export to. Having domestic processing of the commodities that we're producing in the countryside is absolutely critical from a demand creation standpoint. You well, especially as like... you're de-emphasizing exports in the years ahead, it looks like, and you have to you have to count on more domestic utilization. Absolutely, you need a pipeline. Yep. All right. Uh, I want to go to this one to wrap things up, and I thought this issue was settled. It, Mexico is still waiting on on proof from the U.S. that GM corn is safe. It's just, I think, a diversion thing. I still wouldn't worry about it, Jeff. I really what? wouldn't. And, and and potentially might just have to wait till after the Mexican June. election, June. Yeah, yes. quite the drought down there. I wonder if that uh, assuages some of their concerns. I would imagine. I just think their AMLO, their president, wants to go out with a bang politically for his southern producers. That, yeah, but these comments is. came from Deputy Ag Secretary Victor Suarez. I'll check into it more. Are there I'll people in the you know in position that are going to mm. you know? Keep this an issue going forward. We'll check into it some more. I just got a note here. Vilsack Monday's going to address NFU, a convention in Scottsdale, Arizona. And we know that when Vilsack goes, especially to the NFU, he'll he'll announce something. Uh, the topic he's going to address is uh, more and better choices for farmers and consumers to enhance transparency and competition. Yeah. Hmm. I, I wonder if it's going to be some final information on the product of USA labeling, because I know there's some Americans yep. going or some Canadians going down to, to, to DC right. next week about that. Hmm. Yep. Very good. Great job today, you guys. Thank you so much. Jim Wiesmeyer, Pro Farmer Policy Analyst. Sean Haney, Real Agriculture, Real Egg Radio. Davis Michelson, come back this afternoon. We're going to have a conversation with Mike Mock from Mike Mock Consulting right here on AgriTalk.